Hey, good evening, everybody. It's Pastor Mary. It's Thursday night, uh, August 20th. And I should say to you, uh, for those of you who hear this in the morning, uh, next Thursday is my husband David's birthday. So I will talk to him. I will probably record my message next Thursday earlier so that I don't have to rush. We don't have to rush through dinner uh, when we're celebrating his birthday next Thursday. Thursday. So, hey, Kathy and Bill. Um, so, yeah, David's birthday is next Thursday, the 27th. So, I will probably record early. Good evening, Betty. I bet Matthew will be there in a minute. Um, so, I wanted to... Good evening, Sherry. So, I just wanted to mention that to you that probably next Thursday I will record a good evening, Phyllis. Um, and we are already planning that tomorrow night we may be doing our jokes and songs inside. It will depend on how things go here. I talked to Rita Bennett earlier today, well, this afternoon. And hey, Laura, and she had shared that it was raining out in Griffin. We did not get it that early, but we got a little bit after that. So um, I know that there, I think it's a 30 or 40% chance of rain tomorrow. But uh, And it looks like we probably won't have rain here. So... If the ground isn't too wet, we'll go outside tomorrow or we'll sit out on our patio. Otherwise, we'll do uh, our Friday night here in the house. So, um, good evening. So, I wanted to say this early on, and I'll probably say it at the end again because some people get on later. But uh, for those who watch it earlier, hey, Laura. Um... And we're in the 80s, by the way, so that's really been nice. So, um, But I wanted to give you all an update. I had shared last night that there was a possibility that I had uh, been around uh, people who had possibly had COVID. Good evening, Ellie. And uh, today I found out, um, well, after, I should say this. So last night after I was on with you all, I found out a third person that I was around this weekend. I guess it was inevitable to be around people who possibly were diagnosed or have a family member diagnosed right now. Good evening, Cheryl. But we had gone last Friday. I think I might have mentioned it to you, but we had Christopher's open house. Now, his open house consisted of two teachers and an aide who were wearing masks, and we were the only ones to come there. Um, but the aide, as it comes out to be found out, she thought she had symptoms and she and her husband got tested. Her husband does not have any symptoms, but has been diagnosed positive with COVID-19 just in the last day or two. She tested negative, but is going to be tested again. Hey, Cheryl and Vaughn. So that's the third person that I've been around since last Friday where they or a family member have been diagnosed with COVID-19 and then today uh, found out that one of the persons I was around Sunday they were positive with COVID-19 and we're waiting for news about the third person their son lives with them and their son is positive COVID-19 and has it pretty bad and they're and that person has taken a test and is waiting to get his results. So as a result of all of that, uh, one, I stayed home today. I work from home. Um, I Lynn said, well, you can be around me. We don't get that close. But I said, no, I don't want to do that right now. I just don't want to, just don't want to do that. I don't feel comfortable uh, with this all being up in the air like this. And, um... Second, I had been planning on going to see a few people and I called or emailed them and said, I just am not willing to take a risk right now. I mean, I feel okay. I did go to bed with a headache, which I don't normally have, but sometimes when I sit on my couch too long, uh, because of my height, I think I get a headache. So, and I did not wake up with a headache this morning um, and I don't have anything else, but um, I am going for another COVID test tomorrow. 
So I tell you all that because um, I'm really on the fence about whether we should have drive-by communion this weekend. Normally, um, we have the hosts have already been blessed and usually I have enough, but I always bless the wine and the grape juice on the Sunday beforehand. So um, right now, I'm not sure if we're gonna have drive-through communion on Sunday. We may postpone it because I'm not gonna know my results and I may not know the results of the other person. And the other person, I was directly around, not for a real long period of time, but I was around them. Um, the aide, like I said, she tested negative, but her husband tested positive. And if you know anything about this, you know that um, you could be asymptomatic and have it and pass it on. And that's just a real concern for me. Um, so thank you, Ellie. I, I appreciate that. And I hope to stay healthy too, but I'm being as careful as I can uh, with all of this. So I just wanted to mention that to you all. Um, and I do ask prayers. I'm not going to say their names, but I do just ask if you will pray for these people who are dealing with, um, and, and I know are worried about their families and whether they could have infected any of them and some of them co-workers and, you know, I mean, this is, is this, this is tough. Um, and they did everything they could to be as safe as they could for the ordination. And you just, you know, it's a 14 day window that you can have symptoms. Um, it takes time to get back um, testing. Um, so I just, you know, it's a tough place. And the bishop was there and, um, and the Holly's family was there. Now we were all very much spread apart. I, um, we weren't close for the most part. They did not have communion at the service. There was no laying on of hands. Um, but still, if you would just keep the bishop, all the people who attended Sunday, um, and just the people, just, just a blanket prayer for everyone that, um, and the one person, his son is very sick. So we just pray that he will be, that he will get well and won't have to go to the hospital. We're just, I'm really, really praying for that. So it's a reality of life, you know? Um, and um, you can um, do everything right and still could get it. So um, I thank you for your prayers and your support. I, I'm doing okay. I'm just more concerned about other people and I'm concerned about you all. And um, so again, I'm not sure about Sunday. I will probably make a decision tomorrow about drive-by communion. We may just hold it off for a week. We'll still have service online on Sunday at 10 o'clock. Um, and it's on Facebook and then it um, hopefully on the YouTube channel. So what I'll do is... Um, We'll send a constant contact note out to everyone who's on our email list. Uh, if not tomorrow night, Saturday, and I will share tomorrow night the decision I've made. I will tell you I'm leaning towards not doing communion drive-by this week. I just feel it would probably be better not to do that, but I don't want to make a decision now. I want to wait to see if we get some news on him because uh, the one person at the event, I was not around at all. I mean, I wasn't even within 20 feet of her. So, um, but I was around the aide and her husband is diagnosed and we were not close, close, but we were within four or five feet of each other. So anyway, um, that's, that is what it is. And um, thank you for listening. And uh, we'll just pray for the best for everybody uh, for this. And that it won't spread from, because from, you feel so bad when people get sick with this. They feel bad, you know, that they worry about their family, their friends, their coworkers, everybody. So, okay, so I've been reading this week from Lasting Promise, devotions from Lutheran World uh, Relief. They are really wonderful. I've read a lot of them this week. Um, I probably 
will not, I'll probably do something else sharing next week, but then, yes, Sherry, definitely. Better safe than sorry, yes. Um, but then I probably will share a few more in another week or two because I just find them so wonderful. And a lot of them, um, it's like, thank you, LaVon, I appreciate that. It's like um, a number of them touch on the gospel lessons that we've been having lately and reading, and it's just been amazing. In fact, this one um, that I'm going to read called Faith also talks about another gospel reading. Um, well, th this is actually a little bit different. This is the one, uh, the story where Jesus is asleep in the boat and the, the water's coming everywhere and there's a big storm and everything. So, so this one is called Faith by Aaron Brock. And you can see the young man. And it says about him, Rashidi Mufame Rashidi. So it's Rashidi Mufame Rashidi stands in the middle of rice fields in Tanzania. In the Dodoma region of Tanzania, Lutheran World Relief works with farmers to improve their rice quality and yield for greater food security for all the community. And this is the devotion. Do you not care that we are perishing? Frustrated that their teacher is asleep in their storm swamp boat, the disciples berate Jesus for his apparent indifference to the danger surrounding them. They want him to get up and help them bail water from the boat. So the disciples are amazed and stunned when Jesus settles the wind and sea. They certainly didn't expect their mortal friend Jesus to calm the storm. Suddenly, their image of Jesus takes on another dimension. Jesus challenges the disciples' expectations, responding not only with weather-altering assistance, but also turning around and questioning them, calling them to grow beyond their limited expectations of him, asking, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? Even though fear easily overrides faith under precarious conditions, like how we're living now, Jesus urges them to have faith anyway. What does it mean to have faith in the midst of conflicts and disasters? And I would say right now, what does it mean to have faith in the midst of COVID-19? Uh, what does it mean when there is tornadoes like in Iowa or the horrible fires in California? I don't know how many of you have seen that, but Vacaville where they showed Vacaville is about an hour a little over an hour away from where we lived in California in seminary. Um, my sister-in-law and her husband used to live there. And it, it's just it's just tragic what has happened. So, um, so are we to wait for Jesus to save the day is the question. If we instead allow Jesus to challenge our expectations of who he is and how he responds, to suffering in the world, our faithful responses to disasters and conflicts broadens as well. When we are asleep to the suffering of those in our global boat, their calls rouse us to action. Despite our shortcomings and fears, Christ acts through us to calm the storms and turmoil-ridden places. In amazement, we learn that we are called to be, as Martin Luther said, little Christ. In service to others. We're called to provide relief to those suffering conflicts and natural disasters and helping people rebuild their lives in the following months and years. We're called to speak out for peace. Unhindered by our expectations and fears, we're called to respond to those who are perishing, knowing that Jesus is in the boat along with us, working through us. And then the questions with it is, how does Jesus call us to respond to suffering in the world? Is there anything about this call that surprises you? So that's something to think about. How does Jesus call to us to respond to the suffering in the world? You know, it's such a, it's such a, I think, interesting questions because um, I've learned in life that there's only one Savior and I'm not it. Uh, there's no perfect pastor, there's no perfect person, and there's plenty of times I don't get it right, and other people don't get it right either. But there's also fear can get in the way, or we can become overwhelmed by the needs of the world and the needs of others, 
that it stops us in our tracks and we're not able to do anything for anybody else. And yet, as I shared the story with you the other night about my trip to Mexico, which, excuse me, so changed my life, was a real, real turning point. I realized on that trip to Mexico, that hunger action trip, that was a learning trip, um, I realized on that that there was a lot I could do and that while I could not um, maybe, you know, myself alone uh, couldn't fix all the problems in the world, that I could be part of the solution and that um, not to be overwhelmed by that. And I've had to remind myself that a number of times in my life that um, I don't want to be stopped in my tracks. Um, by fear of not being able to help others, but I want to be challenged to do what I can. Um, I will say I had an encounter last week um, that has, I hadn't, I thought about it that day and I um, have been, it's not left me. And what it was, was I went to Walmart um, to get a few things, I, I usually go, I, I'll just be honest, okay? I usually go to Target um, or I go to Aldi's or I go to Kroger's. Those are the places I usually go. But I needed a few things. I wasn't sure if Target would have them because they were, they were more um, things that I just thought, well, I may not find them there and I don't want to make two trips. So, so I went to Walmart close to where I live. So... And when I was driving in, there was, I saw a gentleman standing at one stop sign when he had a sign. And when I came around the other way, because I was going to Staples first before I went into Walmart, there was a woman standing with a sign at the stop sign coming in that way. Well, I didn't get out extra cash. I don't often get out extra cash. And I carry some on me, but I don't carry a huge amount of money on me. And I honestly had, I think, $3 on me. That's all I had. Um, and I had just picked up a gift card for a friend um, to help her. And when I was driving out, I realized, oh, yeah, that lady's going to be there, probably going to be there. So I quick got out a few dollar bills um, to give her, knowing that it wasn't a lot. Um, and I know, I know there are people who say don't give, don't, don't give money. And a lot of times I don't give money. Uh, I carry a bag that has supplies and food and stuff in it, like for somebody who's homeless. But this lady looked like she probably had kids and wasn't able to possibly I don't know her story. This is just my guess and probably wasn't able to either get food or or enough money for rent or something i don't know and and listen in my feeling these days people who there are people out who do scams okay i know that but there are also people that are just desperate enough that will stand out there because they're worried about how their family's going to make it and i always figured this okay this is how my rule of thumb i decided this actually when i was in my early 20s and that was, if I decide to help somebody, it's because I want to help them. And if they are scamming me, then it's on them that they scam me. But if I help, it's because my heart tells me to help. A lot of times I'll take somebody to get a sandwich or help them get gas or do things like that. Um, but I, I didn't have a lot of time. I needed to get home. So I rolled down my window. Well, I didn't roll down my window. You know how that used to be. But I put my window down and I gave her a couple dollars. And, you know, I'll also say this. I'm not looking for somebody to be grateful. I know they're in a bad place, okay? But this was the first time this ever happened to me. And the lady was like, I said to her, I'm sorry that I don't have more to give you right now. And she goes, yes, and I know you have more you could give me. And I was really taken back by that. Now, I'm not, I wasn't mad at her. I'm not mad at her. I think she was probably in a really bad place. And the car right in front of me was a Mercedes. They didn't stop. 
Well, part of me honestly thought, lady, I stopped. I gave you something. I mean, I didn't say that to her. Um, but I felt that for a moment, like, you know, but that's not going to stop me from helping somebody again. And again, I, you know, I don't normally give cash. I just, that time I felt like I should do that. And, um, more times than not, when I follow what my heart tells me to do, it's, it's always been what I feel that God has laid on my heart to do. Uh, I'll tell a quick story. When I worked in Lawrenceville at um, Amazing Grace Lutheran, and again, I don't pick up hi hitchhikers. I've never in my life. But I was there at church. I was alone, and I decided to go out and get something to eat because I hadn't brought anything. And I knew that I was going to have a long day, and I needed to go get some food. Well, right when I got in my car and was pulling out, they have a semi-circle drive. Uh, well, it's actually, it's a full circle drive. And you come up onto, um, now I can't even think of the highway. Uh, it runs from Lilburn to Lawrenceville. Um, boy, I'll think of it later. But anyway, it's not like 75, 85, but it's it's a major four-way, four-lane highway or road that goes, runs through the whole area. Well, anyway, there was a young man. As I was coming around the circle, there was a young man who had stepped just down because you have to step down or drive down into park for the church. And so I didn't, I didn't feel afraid. And I'm going to be, I'm just going to tell you, he's an African-American, darker, young skinned man. And I wrote, and I again, rolled down my window and I said, Hey, can I help you? I'm, you know, I'm pastor here. And he said, I need a ride to Gwinnett College. And I said, okay, get in. I'll take you. So, and again, I felt perfectly, like, I listened to my gut nine times out of ten. But I felt like this is what I was supposed to help him. So, as I took him and I got talking to him, I found out that he lived in Tucker. And if you know anything about that area, he had already walked for, like, four hours. He worked a job at Gwinnett College. And... But there was no bus. They hardly had a bus that ran. He didn't have a car. He had little to no way to be able to get up to Gwinnett College. And I didn't know till recently um, the rest of the story. But anyway, so while I was driving him up, I was talking to him and getting to know him. And realized, and he was taking the bus to get on a MARTA because he was in chef school in downtown Atlanta. So he could get to there. But this was a job he had, and so he would walk up to eight hours one way to get to work. And I really liked him. Very polite, kind young man, and we made a connection. I got his phone number. I gave him my phone number. And another young guy who worked at our church, who I think still works there at um, Amazing Grace, uh, Tin, who is from Vietnam, I told him about meeting this young man and so because I lived an hour away I couldn't always pick him up or meet him to help him get him get him up to work so Tim stepped in and started taking him on a regular basis would meet him and pick him up and take him to work I took him a couple times just two or three times but Tim and him made a relationship and he and I made a relationship and every once in a while I'd stop by and drop him off some food or something because he had nobody else there, no family, nobody, and he was just a really good, good guy. And, well, so recently I heard from him. He right now is driving a truck uh, cross country. He had been working as a chef, and I have a feeling he'll go back to it because he was very good at it. But um, he sent me a note just a month ago that um, honestly could make me cry, and he said, he said, I'm in, Wy he, he was either in Wyoming or Montana. Don't tell me why I get, don't ask me why I get the two mixed up. But he said, it was, it was a Sunday morning. He said, I'm going to a church here today because of you. Because he hadn't grown, grown up with any faith of any kind. And I shared faith. I shared my Christian faith with him and talked to him about faith. And then he said something I didn't know. He said, I asked the police to give me a ride and they refused to give me a ride. 
He said, I asked somebody else to give me a ride and they refused to give me a ride. And when I met you, I asked you and you were the only person who would give me a ride. And he said, I'm going to church today because of you. I didn't know that staying open and giving somebody a ride would make a difference in their life. But it made him a dear friend with 10 and he stays in touch with me, um, and and I'm grateful that God put it on my heart to reach out to him. So if I see that lady again, I'm going to, if I go to Walmart again soon and she's out there, I'm going to get her a $10 Walmart gift card and just say, this is for you and your family. Because, you know, we, we all, I, I keep telling you, we take our little bit, we put it together. And with that little bit blessed by God, we can make a difference in people's lives. And so I want to thank you also very, very much um, for the help you've been providing for those in need, uh, for the collections of our change and our dollar bills and our dimes that has been part of the work that God has been calling us to do, um, reaching out to others, making a difference. And I would like to mention that if any of you have any yarn um oh yeah Levon, Levon I don't normally do that I mean that's the only time in my life I have done that only and most of the time I would not do that and um and also I don't I don't give to every person I see either so don't don't think I do that but it was a woman and I thought maybe I could at least give a little bit so that my little bit could be with other people's little bits. And and uh, there's plenty of times I don't stop if I don't feel safe or I don't feel, you know. But um, but that lady, I mean, I knew that she was speaking out of a very difficult place that she said that to me. And I just, I just felt bad for her. I didn't hold it against her. I just, I pray for her, pray for her situation and pray there will be help for her. Because there's a lot of people hurting right now. A lot of people going through a tough time and um, we can't help everybody but there are people and children and places that we can bring our help together our um, monetary or other ways to help people and so I just want to um, you know just do what you feel God calls you to do um, Misha used to say that he would not miss it and it might help someone. Ellie said, yes, that's how I am. I'm like, you know, but like I said, I mean, I can't help everybody and I don't do it with everybody, but there's just times that I feel compelled. And I do often carry a bag that have been put together and maybe that's something we'll do. A Griffin, I don't know. I mean, there is a lot of homeless in Griffin, but there's bags that I carry in my car that I've put together or churches I've served at like, Amazing Grace always has the homeless bags. And one of the neat things on it is like it has water and socks and toothbrush and toothpaste and uh, crackers and stuff. But uh, there's a label they put on it and it says, as I drive away, I pray for you. And then it says, will you pray for me too? And I really like that they put that on there and um, their bags are $5 and that's just to pay for it so they can keep making bags. And I don't know what they've been doing in this time. Um, but I have other friends who've made bags and I carry one of those in my car. And I've given away a number of bags because um, that's usually what I give is the bags with um, different things in them to help people who are homeless and, and are in need. So, so anyway, so, but you know, um, we do have to be careful. We do have to watch out. There are times it's not safe and we, we just have to, but I think what this is a reminder of is, you know, maybe there are ways and safe ways like we have been doing of collecting funds to reach out for the suffering in the world. Um, and, um, and I think what surprises me is really the response that people have had as I've been talking about uh, the loss from Lutheran World Relief um, of losing the four shipping containers full of Things I've really been touched by how many of you have brought your offering, not just for the work of the church, but for that noisy change bucket and that we are really going to be able 
to add a good uh, amount to other churches who are doing something so that hopefully uh, we'll be able to uh, see that all of that will be replaced through all the work of all the churches and individuals so that the people who are most in need will not miss out this year, but that there will be things to replace them. So, so I thank you and we continue to collect for that. And if we don't meet this week, I will extend uh, our collection to the Sunday after Labor Day. And as again, as I said, I don't know yet. Uh, I'll wait to see if we get some news tomorrow. If this person was okay, then um, I may feel okay to come and do it. And but I'm not going to make a decision till I see if I can get um, some news about him tomorrow. So, uh, so the yarn. Okay, Susan. So anyway, so Catherine Campbell, who some of you may or may not know, but she would come to wor worship regularly. Andy would bring her. Um, she walks with a cane, not April. I think, you know, April, but Catherine, um, I talk to Catherine very regularly and she's a huge crocheter, huge, huge, huge. And Lynn from church sent her a bunch of yarn and she's already crocheted almost all of it. So I talked to her today and I said, would you be willing to consider crocheting some baby blankets because one of the kits for Lutheran World Relief is, I got to check it, but I think it may take some crocheted items. She said, oh, I would love to, but I'm almost out of yarn. And she likes more lightweight. She doesn't want heavyweight yarn. So if you'd have any and you want to drop it by church, then um, when I feel like I'm safe to go, I'm going to go see her either next week or the week after, and I can either take it to her or mail it to her. But she loves to crochet, and she crochets all the time. And uh, I may ask her to make a few prayer blankets or prayer shawls uh, so that when people have a need, we can share prayer shawls from her too. So, well, Susan, if you're willing to share your yarn, you can drop a by church Tuesday through Friday to Lynn and uh, thank you for that. And we would, and if we meet on Sunday, you can bring it in a bag then uh, for drive-by communion. You can bring it then as well. Cause she, she will put it to good use. She's already done. She crochets all the time. So um, if if you've got something like that that you want to share, just let me know. Cause she said, yeah, she'd be glad to to help us out this way. So I'm gonna, I will be. I talk to her almost every other day cause she has no way to get these, get anything we do online. She doesn't get to hear anything. So um, I'm the one connection right now for her with church. So I stay, stay in touch with her on a regular basis. So, okay, well, so that, that's it. So uh, I do want to share. Um, so I talked to Rita Bennett today. She had talked to Andy and Andy really wasn't up to talking uh, so I'm going to check on him tomorrow. Uh, I have talked to several people today. I've left messages. Um, I don't know if Janet's on here. I left a message for Leslie, Jane's sister in California to check on them. It looks like from the map I saw, they are not in the air in an area with fires. Jane Mache, for those of you who know Jane, uh, I was reaching out to her sister, Leslie, to check on her and see how she's doing. And I hope to make some more phone calls this weekend to check on other people. If you'd like me to call you, just text me and say, give me a call. Uh, and I'll check up on you. So, um, let's see. And uh, Susan said to say, please let everyone know I need the dolls if you cut them out and I have more material to cut out. And Susan, uh, you may have heard from Laura, but she's staying the weekend because her nephew and family are coming down to where they're at so she won't be back and I'm working on the dolls and if uh, we don't have Sunday I should have them I will leave them out at church on for Tuesday for for David to get them Tuesday afternoon by then so I am working on those but if anybody is willing to cut out dolls um, but you need more material more material to cut out um, so if you know anybody that's got material that could be used, is it any particular kind? Are you just wanting blue or tan or do you mind, um, you probably don't want pattern, I guess, cause it's supposed to look like a 
you can see the doll's feelings on them. They're very, very cute. In fact, Susan, if you say it's okay, I will share the picture of the dolls you've done on, excuse me, on the church Facebook page so people can see them. So, um, but she's making their dolls, their feeling dolls, and they show different emotions so that kids like my son Christopher or other kids who maybe have trouble understanding people's feelings can look at the dolls and hold the dolls and look at their different emotions on their face. So, so thank you again, Susan, for you and your friend for doing that and Mary Johnson for cutting out and Marilyn, uh, call Marilyn Drog, Drogmiller because she may have material. I think she said she has a lot of material, but she doesn't see this either. So Susan, give her a call because she may have more material or may be able to cut more out for you. So, okay, so I don't have any uh, other prayer requests except for to keep praying for Andy, uh, praying for the what I asked you with COVID and those who are suffering and dealing with COVID, those who've lost loved ones from COVID, those who've lost family or family who's suffering right now, those who are going through difficult times. Um, okay, Susan, I'll be glad to share that. Um, so just lifting up and lifting up the world and just putting in God's hands and knowing that God hears our prayers and knows, um, knows, knows the desires of our hearts for others and, uh, living and working, uh, for the good of all and loving our neighbor as ourselves. So keep being safe. Please keep wearing your mask. Um, it keeps other people safe and, um, I just, I can see it, see it in my own life of what's happened. And I'm praying, praying hard that nobody else gets sick, that um, masks have helped with these situations. And I just uh, pray for you all too, that God will keep you safe. And Laura's praying for you all the time for a new job. Um, and so I just ask God to bless you now. And so may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, join us tomorrow night. Uh, praying I find out some news for tomorrow. Um, oh my gosh. Wow, Susan, you've really been busy on the mask. Uh, if somebody does need a mask or you know somebody that might need a mask, let, let the church know. Uh, Susan, we do have some there, but... We have some that can be picked up or that Susan's made or um, we can mail some if needed. So just um, let me know and we will do our best to get them sent to you. All right. Well, I hope you all have a great night or a good morning. Uh, I hope you're doing well. And I look forward to seeing you back here again tomorrow night. Take care. Good night.